Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a survival horror game in Unity and welcome to episode 21. So this tutorial we're going to take a look at creating a splash screen, so we're going to create another scene. Uh, we'll look, this men look at making this menu uh, look better than what it is rather than just this kind of, well, plasticine-y look. And we'll also look at linking scenes together. So firstly what I want to say about linking scenes together is if we go to File and go to Build Settings, we've added these scenes in here. And remember when we actually linked the Game Over scene? That was when we got hit too many times. So we're going to use the same sort of method to link our splash screen into our main menu. And then obviously further on when we click, we can go into other scenes. So everything should start coming together quite nicely. So firstly, let's take a look at making this scene look better than what it currently does. And remember that post-processing we did a couple of tutorials ago? Yep, we can do that all over again. However, we may not be able to use the exact same settings. So this is going to be a little bit of an explanation on why we sometimes can't use the same settings. So let's go to the post-processing folder. Let's go to runtime and let's attach the post-processing script to our main camera. On there, let's drag and drop our profile settings right here into here and then let's press play. Now keep in mind these are the exact same settings that we had in the other scene and you can see here that they just do not work in this scene. There are many factors to consider. So firstly let's take a look at getting rid of our directional light. Let's just delete that out of the scene altogether and already we can see it's looking somewhat better. Next thing to do, let's go to Window, let's go to Rendering, and let's go to Light Settings. Now this also plays a big part in how our scene looks. If we were to change the Intensity Multiplier right down, obviously you would see quite a difference, but you would still have that effect of it's much too bright. So obviously our Bloom would need changing. However, we can still get around that. If we go to our Source and change it to Colour, we could always change our colour to a kind of a, a greyish maybe colour if we wanted to. I guess you could always change it here depending on how you want it to look. So I'm just going to undo that, come out of that, change it back to Skybox. And I'm going to go on the Skybox material here. And we could theoretically, if we wanted to, change it to something else. Something that isn't necessarily uh, a Skybox. Obviously you would have this kind of effect still going on. But... If we change it to none, you can see this is how it would look yet again. And if you want to stick with that, that's totally fine. If not, again, that's up to you. So another way we could actually get around this is actually enclosing the space. And remember that whatever the camera doesn't see doesn't necessarily matter. So if we set that back to the default skybox, and I'm going to take these sections of wall and just duplicate them just to kind of close in this area. So if I place that there, place this over here, and then once again, just bring that over here and then close it in. Now you'll have noticed that I do actually have the uh, settings up here for image effects on whilst in uh, my scene view. I think I'm actually gonna come out of that just for now and work without them just to see how this turns out. So all I'm doing, like I said, is just enclosing this entire area in. These walls here don't really matter because they never get seen. Uh, let's take this here, hold control, press D to duplicate, bring it up probably to about there. And I'm actually going to increase the size all the way along here on the X. So that will be 20. And let's just slide it into position about there. And let's press play. So already we can see that it's not quite as awful as it originally looked. And I guess there's different ways of doing it, but let's add a couple of extra things to this now to make this look a little better. Because if we were to turn off on our main camera, the post-processing, we can see exactly what it looks like. Obviously our eye is having a bit of a problem because there's nothing to help it illuminate as such. So to get around that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a light source inside here. So game object, uh, light and point light. Let's bring it inside and up. Now we can see our eye. So 
I'm going to increase the range on this to probably 20, just to bring a bit of illumination to the scene. And then press play once again, and let's check this out. Okay, so it looks like we need to modify our light. Let's bring it back a bit, uh, reduce it to maybe 15, and let's bring it into the center a little more. And I'm going to save that scene now. And I'm going to go back to our original scene, which is scene 001. And if you remember, we actually had some uh, particle systems in here, which turned out to kind of be our fog, if you remember, which is that right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, one of these particle systems. I'm not quite sure which one I should take. I don't think it really matters too much, to be honest. Let's take this one. Let's take the original one. So I'll take that particle system, head to our main menu, uh, zoom out just a bit, and let's place it here in this scene. So let's bring it this way, and I'm going to rotate by 90, and just bring it to about there, and press play. Okay, so looking at it now, we can see what we want to get to with our scene. However, it's probably not entirely how we would want it. So I'm going to increase this. I don't want to spend too much more time on this, but I'm showing you different ways that you can do things. So another good example would be to reduce the um, sensitivity of the normal map on here. So we could change this to 0.1 maybe and change the wall also to... Point one on normal map and it might be wise to in fact let's press play and just see how that looks now okay so I'm gonna go on the main camera and I'm going to change the render path now to deferred obviously because we spoke about that when we did the um, post-processing first time and I'm going to take the smoothness off the wall here to about there and increase the metallic just slightly and press play. We should have a fairly decent looking scene now. So this is going to be effectively our main menu. You now take the time to build up your main menu how you would want it to be. Uh, like I said, I don't want to waste too much more time on this because quite frankly, I think I've wasted a bit too much time on this already because I want to get onto some cooler stuff now. Let me just have one last quick look at it. Okay, so this will be my main menu for now. You take the time if you want to. You could actually re change uh, your post-processing right there. So you could change that asset, uh, the profile, to something different if you wanted to. Be careful, though, not to change the original one because you don't want to change this and then it r completely ruins what you have for your original post-processing profile. So don't waste too much time on that. So we made our main menu look a little bit better. Let's now work on a splash screen. So make sure we definitely have that scene saved. Let's go to file and new scene. So in here I'm just going to have a real simple splash screen. I'm just going to have it completely black and then just have uh, the Jimmy Vegas Game Studios logo, have a little animation then takes us to our menu. So in order to do that I'm going to quickly bring in a texture so you would have whatever texture you would want for your splash screen. And I'll go game object, UI, and let's go to raw image. I'm going to stretch the raw image, no problem. And zero out everything up here. So it basically covers our entire scene, or screen I should say, not scene. Uh, change the color to black. And in the middle of that, I'm going to have uh, the logo. So UI again, another raw image. Let's drag and drop JV logo, so whatever logo you have, and there it is in the middle. And it's just a case of resizing to make it fit the scene properly. So I'm going to use the rec tool there, stretch if need be, so about there. There we go. And let's have a look. Easy, nice easy splash screen. So what I'm going to do is add a quick animation to this. And if I go to uh, assets, sorry, animations, I'm going to have to store the animation here for this raw image. So F2 to rename that raw image, and let's name it as JV logo. 
You could do whatever you want with your splash screen. I'm just kind of giving you a couple of ideas. You could have an animated logo. You could have a bit of something going on in the background if you wanted to. Again, I like simplicity, so I'm going to go with that one. Uh, initially, I'm going to have the rotation on the Y as 90. So technically, we shouldn't be able to see it. And I'm going to have it kind of rotate in. So animation, uh, create, and we'll have JV logo anim and press record so set the first keyframe it's only going to be done on the rotation so i'm going to have that set as 90 and then after half a second it's still set as 90 because i don't want anything to happen for the first half second i want it to rotate over the course of a second after half a second has passed of just a black screen so that means that we now need to go to frame 90 and then rotation is zero. So I want that to display for probably about, uh, let's say four seconds. So let's go ahead, four seconds on our timeline with our keyframe, which will be uh, 240 onto that. So we'll need 330. And we once again have that as zero. So we've dealt with animation before. I'm not going to spoon feed you what to do now because we already know animation. We're in the 21st tutorial, so we're well versed on animation. Uh, and then finally, frame 360, it's going to rotate the other way. So we could change it that way to minus 90. And let's stop that animation. And let's check it out. Hopefully it should be okay. There we go. Okay, so let's turn off the loop on that because that is just fine. So untick loop time. And let's save the scene. And we'll have it as splash screen. And now this is where we have to be careful with our scenes because we probably will need a bit of manipulation in some earlier scripts. So file, build settings, and let's click on add open scenes. Obviously, we want this scene to be the first one that we see. So we need to move this to the top and make sure that that is scene zero. Scene one would effectively be the main menu. And then, uh, sorry, the main menu. Yeah, so scene one, like I said, there is the main menu. Then scene zero, zero, one would be two. Game over would be three. So obviously, that now means that we have to change our game over from uh, whatever we had it originally to three. So just keep in mind these numbers just for now. So save, make sure we're all good there. And I'm going to go to the scripts folder. Uh, if I can find it. <laughs> there we go. Right click, create folder. And I'm going to call this menu. And if I I'll just call it menus. Keep it simple. And in here, right click, create C sharp script. And we'll have this as splash to menu or Munu for some reason. I've mistyped menu, I've put Munu. Never mind. <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna do with this is something we have done before. So we're not gonna worry too much about how we do this section because we're gonna use just scene management to do a couple of things or a couple of lines. So at the top, we need to add in using Unity Engine dot scene management, semicolon. Let's get rid of void update and uh, any annotations. Keep void start because we need it. What we do need to do is a coroutine. So I enumerator, and we're going to call this uh, take to menu, open close bracket, open curly bracket, and then yield return new, wait for seconds. And in here, the amount of seconds that we have our animation running for. So our animation effectively runs for a total of, um, is it six seconds it'll be, isn't it? So it'll be six seconds just over. So what I'd like to do is wait for probably about seven seconds. And then after seven seconds, we have scene manager dot load scene one, which will be our main menu. Which means in void start, we now have to put start coroutine and in brackets take to 
menu semicolon. We need the open close bracket there as well. And save the script. And we just need to attach this script into this scene. Now, I can't quite remember if I've mentioned um, something about scene switching within Unity before. I may have done, but if not, I'm going to repeat it. Um, when we switch scenes, there is a little bug in Unity where the lighting doesn't display properly. Uh, this will probably be evident when we come across to our main menu when we test this out now. I'll explain a little bit more in a second. Uh, so empty game object, and we just need to attach our script onto there. No variables to set. So let's now press play. Okay, so, so far, so good. There we go. Okay, so uh, when I said about uh, light in main menus, well, um, I'm not sure if it's quite evident there. Um, when you actually build the game to play itself, uh, the lighting will work just fine. For some reason in the engine itself, it tends to not work as intended. Don't worry about that at all. It does happen. It's it's not you. It's, it's not me. It's just a little bug that happens. Don't worry about it. Uh, so one last thing. Um, let's go to main menu. Save that. And I want to quickly add on full eye. Uh, a normal map. So I'm going to create a normal map from full eye, or control, press D, and texture type will be normal map, create from grayscale, apply, and yep, you've already guessed it. I'm just going to drag and drop that onto there. And let's have a look at our scene now. There we go. So it just looks like there's a bit more to that eye than, you know, just flat and plain. Some of you may have noticed that from the um, little short that is on my channel. Okay, so guys, uh, next tutorial, what we'll do is we will kind of start building another scene because I want to create a uh, like a story intro scene. Um, I'm not 100% sure on what we're going to aim for, but we're going to try a couple of new techniques in creating that and we'll eventually create a cool cut scene. Um, and if, We'll then get on to story. We'll be able to build up more voice work, more subtitles, so we can make this menu fade into uh, the opening sequence, then into the game, so we can really start building up a game from the ground up from here on. So my intention is by about tutorial number 25, we should have our intro scene complete and we'll be able to feed everything together and then start building up our main game with some puzzles and whatnot. So I'm setting out for the long run from here on in. Uh, we'll probably also have a couple of bug fixes uh, in next tutorial as well, because I know there are one or two here and there that we need to uh, address. So guys, until that next tutorial, thank you very much for watching.